yesterday or morning, depending on where you are, we had a new kind of lineup announcement for the books products this fall. And that would be the Note Air 4C, the Note Max, and the Books Pama 2. But uh, I think the star of the show, which I'll talk about at the end, is in their firmware and their software. So let's get into it and do a brief recap of the product changes here. The Note Air 4C, they've made some changes to the, the kind of way the software works, but I imagine that's going to come to the 3C as well. The Note Air 4C comes in at 499 which is starting to creep into the remarkable Paper Pro territory here, but which is at 580, I believe. And But the thing is, it's very different in terms of the way it's used. So this is used for Android apps and scrolling. It does have more RAM now, 6 gigabytes versus 4 gigabytes on the 3C. But the Paper Pro is more for kind of document reading, PDF reading, and uh, maybe, you know, books and actual just note taking in color because of the way the technology of gallery versus Kaleido works. The overall storage has remained the same, but you do have expandable storage on the Note Air 4C lineup. And then one overarching theme here for all these devices is Android 13. This is something that is a little bit of a miss, I think, because it could have been Android 14. Android 13 is an upgrade, though, because some of these devices were on older like Android 11 and stuff. So that is uh, something that is, is welcome. It also does have a more powerful processor. And I believe the Kaleido screen, they're doing some trickery to make it look a little more vibrant and, and contrasty. So that'll be interesting to see. The next up is the Note Max, which is a cool kind of new intro in their lineup. Funny enough, it kind of looks like the Go lineup in terms of the design cues but it's the Note lineup. But this has some cool kind of features to it. As you can see, it obviously has a keyboard deck and the keyboard deck is nice. It has a mouse trackpad too, but because it's a 13.3 inch A4 size device, it is, is relatively large. So it will be good for productivity apps. It does have book super refresh as well and six gigabytes of RAM and is 4.6 millimeters thin. So just as thin as the books go, but has that dock for expansion. This device comes in at $650, and the star of the show here is probably the Carta 1300 panel. That's 300 PPI in the A4 size, but it does have super refresh and is, is quite powerful in general for with the with a 2.8 gigahertz processor. And this device comes in at around $650. So you can see for split screen, like you know PDFs, taking notes, reading books, taking notes, calendar, all that. It's gonna be quite a productivity powerhouse here. Interestingly enough though, I don't think they mentioned that it has a front light, which lends to the thin size. Yeah, the Carta 1300 panel should be great. I did a video about that up here. You can check out if you'd like to see that. Really, really good specs for the Note Max here. Probably the one I'm most excited about testing out. And the books Note Max comes in at 650 there. Now the Pama 2, this is something that I was totally expecting it to maybe have a SIM tray, maybe to be a Kaleido screen, and like maybe have a Wacom EMR. I know that's a lot to ask, but that would be my ideal device. So yeah, this is really just like a minor, minor refresh. It really hasn't changed much in terms of the specs, but it does have some slight upgrades. Probably the biggest, most notable upgrade is Android 13 on this device because the old one had Android 11. So a lot of the support for that had stopped. But in terms of the panel, I think it's still Carta 1200. I don't think it changed to 1300. It does have a fingerprint sensor now. It's kind of on the power button there. It's kind of a weird move because it doesn't have a lot of the sensitive data or information that you would have on a phone. This is just like you're supposed to be a reader and like maybe have some music on it and some, some apps. I mean, I'm not going to hate on it because it's good to have a fingerprint sensor, but I feel like that would have been something that you would expect with a phone. I don't know, that maybe that's just me. But yeah, it's 279, still a great device, but uh, not the upgrades that I was hoping for. But the star of the show here by far, I think, is the books firmware because they've implemented some stuff here in the actual firmware, like AI tools. They've really added a lot of stuff here that makes it kind of edge closer to the Supernote platform in terms of the organizational power and you know, Supernote, I think, is going to have to 
have some some good software updates when the A5X2 launches this this year, hopefully. <laughs> the ability to kind of like lasso recognition in text, shape recognition, and then the smart scribe feature. This is all stuff that's really kind of powerful. So they have some outline features that are kind of like maybe the digest in Supernote. It just gives you that outline power. You get improved kind of PDF stuff where you get like links in here and it just makes it easier to use. The shape tool is something that Books is dominating right now. Like the VWoods has pretty good shape recognition, but Books is better, has more options, has more fill patterns you can do. And you'll see, we'll talk, there's, they show a little bit later, I think the, yeah, you can just immediately do like three dimensional shapes with the drag of a pen. So that's something that's, that's really, really nice. And, you know, they have table of contents now, they have hyperlinked indexes and like lasso recognition so you can pull stuff out of documents and the OCR is improved as well. For NeoReader, they've also improved some of the stuff as well. And so, yeah, pretty strong showing from the software side of things. I think decent showing from the hardware. Look forward to testing some of these out. Let me know which one you think is the most interesting down in the comments. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.